Welcome back to another Friday Functions video. In this Friday's Functions video, we're going to take an app that's already been created for my change order list, and we're going to add some mathematical calculations. One of the things I've always wanted to do with my SharePoint list is easily create a way to kind of roll up some a little bit of reporting for my list. And so I'm going to show you how to do that right in your app. So I'm actually going to skip this. And this app was created a while back, but this is an app that was created from a SharePoint list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some calculations at the top. So I'm going to go to Browse Screen 1. And I'm going to select Browse Gallery 1. And then I'm just going to move it down a little bit to leave some room up here at the top for my, for my reporting. And then I'm going to move also, I'm going to move down this um, area here. The And I'm just using my control key to select the different things I want to move. So I've got the rectangle, the search icon, and the text box. And I'm just going to move that down. There we go. Doesn't change any of the functionality. Functionality still works fine. Um, now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of reporting at the top here. So I'm just going to add a little label here. And I'm going to say, yeah, click in here, and say total change requests to date. Well, total change requests. Let's just leave it, leave it like that. And then underneath that, so let's move that a little bit over. Let's make it can can a little bit smaller. So let's make it, uh, let's put it on home. And let's make it like 14 is the smallest. I will go for the phone. And then I'm also going to make another label just by hitting copy and paste. And I'm going to call this total cost impacts submit boom, boom, boom. and then I'm going to copy that one control C control V and I'll show you how I can space these total schedule impacts so these are just labels here that I will use but want to space these nicely, you can highlight them all and align them all left. And you can distribute horizontally or vertically. I'm going to distribute vertically. That way there's equal space between them. So now we have our three kind of labels. Now I can go ahead and put the number right after this um, uh, marker here. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for the text property of this label. And then I'm going to put an and sign right here and add a very simple function for today, which is count rows. And literally what it does is just what it says. It's going to count all the rows in our change order list. Now, we will get, and I'm going to put a little space in between here. So let's just put a space after the semicolon. You will get the little blue squiggly line. You know why? Because count rows is not delegatable. It won't delegate, which means if I had more than 500 items in this list, it would only count up to 500. And so that's why it's telling us that count rows is not supported for delegation. So, but it, I know for a fact that I will never get to 500 rows because we archive at the end of every month and we're never going to have 500 rows in this list. So I'm good with that. All right, so now in the next row, though, I only want to count how many change requests are cost impacts, okay? So we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to use an if statement. So count if, see that? Count if, same thing, what source, what data source do you want? Change order, same data source. But what's the condition? Well, I have a field called impact type that actually has a value of either cost or schedule. So I'm going to choose cost in this case. 
And now what I've said is count if in change orders the impact type is cost. Now if we go back to my SharePoint list and go to the all items view, and then we do a little bit of filter by, and we choose cost, you'll see that there are only six, okay? Now, we're going to do the exact same thing for, for schedule impacts. So I'm just going to copy all of this and save some time and then paste that in here. I just got to remember to put that space in and change this to schedule. And that's all we have to do. And you'll see that there are five. So if we go back to our filter situation here and we choose schedule, you can clearly see that there are five. So it's a great way of rolling up data. Um, you can also sum the data. So let's just put a um, another, let's put a little uh, rectangle here. A little rectangle. Maybe a circle instead to be creative. I try my best. So we're going to put a little circle in there. And in this circle, cost impacts is a big deal for us. I'm going to put the cost impacts. So label, get myself a label that's big enough. Put that in there. Notice that it's helping me center because those lines are there. I don't know if you knew that. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to center the text as well and make the text white and make it 18 points because it might get big. All right. Now, what is going to be what I put in here? So I'm going to look for the text. And then I'm just going to use the sum function, sum, sorry, sum if, now let's just use sum, sorry, sum. And then what, I'm wanna, what do I want to sum? I want to sum the, um, change orders. What do I want to sum? I want to sum the cost estimate. All right, so what I've done is I've taken the cost estimate field from this list and I've summed it all up. Now I'm going to make it look like text. Again, sum is not going to delegate on SharePoint, but you can use it if you have less than 500 rows. I'm just going to put this in text, and then I'm going to put a comment here and put my number format, which is dollar number sign, number number zero, dollar, and there we go. And that is it. We now have, let's just zoom in here so we can see this really quickly. You have the total change requests using count rows. You have the total cost impact. Again, but using count if instead of count rows, and we're counting if the impact type is cost, and there's six. Total schedule impacts submit, same as cost, but schedule is the condition. And then finally, if we want to sum a numeric value, we can just use sum, change orders, what column, and then what format. And then notice that I um, put it in a text. Uh, function in order to format it. So I hope this is helpful. And it's interesting that it's very helpful in the context of what people are doing to kind of get an idea of what those um, what those uh, sums and counts are. It can be very informative while they're working as well. So I hope this was helpful to you. And I hope you'll start using some uh, sums and count if and count rows in the many data sources that you might be using. In some cases, it will be delegatable. In others, it won't. Now, if you're curious where that all lies, just go to powerapps.microsoft.com, 
when you're in powerapps.microsoft.com, go to the documentation under learn and up at the top where it says search, type delegation. After you type delegation, the second response that comes up is delegatable data sources. And you can actually see which data sources will actually delegate some. SQL Server does. So there's a little plus there. Which ones will do, uh, and basically some I would say is in the category of count and count if. So you can probably assume that the count and the count if will also be delegated built in SQL, although it's not in SharePoint, but it is in Dynamics and so forth. So check this page out to find out where your delegation lies. And this again is only if you have more than 500 records. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that and I'll talk to you again on the next Functions Friday video.